Hi, so in video 1017 I introduced the idea of this thing. It, it's a commutator actually, it's a mechanical commutator meant for externally driving brushless DC motors. And what's the point when they can be driven by semiconductors really well? And yes they can, but only up to a certain point and they are difficult to actually build unless you really understand the electronics. The good thing about these kind of things are they're really easy to build. So you can build these from little bits and pieces lying around that cost you next to nothing. And what I'm going to do is go into how to build this thing, because I think this thing could be tremendously useful to people who are wanting to control large motors, don't, don't want to spend a fortune, and perhaps don't have the electronic knowledge behind them to be able to do that. You just don't need it. If you want to drive a motor for an electric vehicle, you don't need those kind of electronics. You can do it really well from something as simple as this. Now, what brushless DC motors do is control the on and off of the power to the coils inside the motor. Essentially, brushless DC motors contain three coils. If you look at them, you may see six or multiples of that, but they are, in a sense, essence, three coils, and they're wired up in a Y configuration, which looks like this. What I need to do is send power down one coil in one direction and the other coil in the other direction because it creates a north-south which will both push and pull the rotor. And I do that when I'm using electronics with effectively a series of six switches. And these six switches are arranged like this. Now if I turn those switches off and on in the right order, the Power will flow through the right number of coils, turning them off and on into electromagnets and pushing the rotor around, which is pretty much exactly how brushless motors work. I mean, the challenge is getting that turn off and on sequence right, because at se separate stages, different coils need to be on or off as positive or negative. And actually, that waveform looks like this. That's only really indicating to you which ones need to be positive and which ones need to be negative. We don't really need to know what the coils are actually doing, we just need to know that we need to turn one positive and the corresponding one negative. That waveform has to be duplicated. Now, it turns out that it's stunningly easy to duplicate. If we have a look at this, See, I divided that circle up into six segments of 60 degrees each. The orange arc covers two segments, making 120 degrees. Then there's a 60 degree separation, then there's another orange arc, and then there's a 60 degree separation. Those orange arcs are actually the contact points for the uh, commutator drum, right here. The brushes are shown in blue as A, B, C. So if we position those brushes 120 degrees apart and build that commutator like that, it will reproduce this signal. So we will get the switching that we need to uh, get. Now let's have a close look up, a close up look at this, so you can see how that drawing corresponds to the actual thing. Okay, so there is the device itself, and these are what are called um, Munson rings, and they hold ball bearings. So if I take those off, we can take that commutator section out, and we can see there are the brushes on that ring. So they're set at 120 degrees apart on this plastic ring to hold them in registration, and clearly the Munson rings support, uh, uh, form the support, and the commutator drops down through the centre there. And the commutator itself is really a bit of a uh, 10mm pipe, and it's on these things, I'll show you what these are in a minute, a couple of bearings so that it can turn. You can see that the brass connection on one side covers 120 degrees. Then there's a 60 degree gap, and then there's the brass section on the other side covering the 120 and a 60 degree gap. Now the commutator contacts here cross the midline, so the brushes go over and will make contact with either side of the commutator, swapping it from plus to minus. This is a bit of resin, keeping these two halves separate. That's the positive side, that's the negative side. That contact is actually made through the Munson ring, so we connect there and there, positive-negative, giving us a positive-negative side. So we connect through the Munson ring, it connects through that ball bearing to the central um, 
brass pipe there to this half of the commutator making that side positive exactly the opposite happens on this side making that side negative the reason this is a bit of pipe is i can put a motor drive in there and use a small dc motor to drive that now these separate these sections of the commutator were made out of this it's a plumbing fitting this is a 15 mil compression fitting on one side and a 10 mil compression fitting on the other side and all i did was turn off the threads and then I cut that between those two hexagonal marks, giving me 120 degrees of brass. Then I turned the whole thing down, put it together with some resin, so that the two halves didn't touch. So this resin between these two made two of those, put them together in that commutator, and that's how I made the commutator that's shown in the drawing. Now the commutator can be a barrel like this, obviously, or it could be a disc. It doesn't really matter which. I just found that the barrel was easier for me to make, and that's how I made the commutator section. When we put that together with the brush action, then we get the switching action that they're actually looking for. So that's how that mechanical commutator was made. That's how it was made. Now, if you think sil silicon is the only answer, then this isn't the video for you, okay? And um, this is uh, what I think is a suitable alternative that can be easily built at a cheap cost to run your brushless motor or run your EV. Now, there is another relationship to bear in mind because the only control parameter is not speed of the driving motor. It's actually speed at which this has been driven and diameter of which this has been driven because that diameter and that speed together will dictate the on-off time of the switches which is going to dictate speed of the motor. But there is a direct relationship between the speed at which this is driven and the speed at which your main motor is driven. Now obviously we're going to drive this with a very tiny DC motor. And a very tiny DC motor is really easy to drive. It's not very complicated. You just put a variable voltage on it, more voltage, more speed. You don't have to have a complicated understanding to drive the tiny DC motor that will drive this. That tiny DC motor, courtesy of the heftiness of these brushes and that brass contact, is going to be what you use to drive that big motor. And so you don't need expensive or complicated electronics to drive the big motor. You don't need expensive uh, and complicated electronics to drive a small DC motor either. Variable control drive will just do fine. So although you're using a motor to drive a motor, there is a definite cost advantage there in terms of the size at which this has to be driven in order to drive that very big one. But like I say, it's really a mechanical solution for people who want to build their own but don't necessarily have the electronics. So I think it's, a, and here's the heresy, I think it's a better solution actually. Anyway, I thought I'd go through how it was made for those folks who would like to give it a go and maybe develop this further, because remember, this is proof of concept. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.